Hello guys and welcome back to Planet 40k. Now this is not one of our countdown to Christmas videos, we're just doing a little bit of a mini review today. Brief kind of look at one of the new models, the Overlord with the Translocation Shroud. Now I thought we'd go through the data sheet because I've got the data sheet and I want to go through it. I want to go through some synergy and give you my sort of first impressions of this unit, of this character and how it's going to interact with our new attachments. So yeah, let's get into the Overlord with the Translocation Shroud. Let's start off with the key statistics. We've got the movement of 5 inches, toughness 5, 2 of arm with a 4 plus vulnerable save, wound 6, leadership 6, and the object's control is 1. Now they are the exact same stats as the standard Necron Overlord, so there's not really anything different so far. The keywords, it's got the overall keyword, so that's going to of course interact with the Abasance Phalanx as an example. And it's a noble, so it will interact with Lich Guard if you applied it to Lich Guard. We'll go over the leader part in a moment. Now, the war gear is slightly different to the standard Overlord because he doesn't have any options. He doesn't have anything really apart from the Overlord's blade, which is the only thing he can actually take, which I think is a decent weapon anyway, so I'm not too unhappy with that. Four attacks, hit on two, strength eight, minus three AP, and two damage with devastating wounds. Now, you hit on twos, nice. Strength 8 means your wound in toughness 4 space marines on 2s. Minus 3 puts them on a 6 plus armor save, and 2 damage just literally ruins models every time one goes through. Now, there is only 4 attacks here, but if he's gone with, say, Lich Guard, the Lich Guard have got the, the volume of attacks. If he's going with Immortals, he's not really getting into melee. It's more about the shooting stuff, and of course, the same applies with Necron Warriors. So, I don't think it's the worst thing, it's just a way of defending himself and his unit if needed. So yeah, we've kind of just already alluded to it, Immortals, Lich Guard and Warriors are the unit that you can be applied to. And then of course you can further boost those units with a Cryptic, not the Lich Guard though, they cannot take a Cryptic anymore, not in this codex. But if you've got Necron Warriors or Immortals, you could maybe put a Plasmancer, a Chronomancer and so on. There's lots of cool synergies, we'll go through that later in this video. He has got a Resurrection Orb which has been severely nerfed in this new codex. It is only now once per battle, so it's not every opponent's command phase anymore. And you're going to be using, when you use reanimation protocols, you're going to be doing it any phase with this orb, and it'll be D6 wounds rather than D3. It's only a once per battle item, which makes it kind of suck a little bit. D6 is better. So that's his war gear. Why would you take him? That's the real question. Why are we taking him? Well, I'll tell you why. There's a lot of good in this, in this character. It's the abilities. First ability, Reanimation Protocols, that's Faction Ability, we know that, that's cool. Mine will be done, very similar to the Necron Overlord. Once per battle round, one unit from your army with this ability can be targeted for a stratagem for zero command points. Now that will be only battle tactic stratagems because they did nerf it not so long ago. If it's not a named stratagem, it can only apply to battle tactic stratagems. And you can also use this even if you've already used that stratagem in that same phase. So you can use it multiple times effectively. But the real game changer here for me is the Translocation Shroud. This is the new gimmick for this new model. This Translocation Shroud, each time this model's unit advances, you don't need to roll for it, you just do an automatic advance roll of a 6. You add that to your movement. In addition, when you're doing a normal move, a fallback move, an advance move, you can do that move horizontally through models and terrain as if they were not even there. As long as you're not finishing on that, on that terrain feature, or the models, enemy and models, or your own, I suppose. So it's kind of like having fly without having fly. It's kind of like having the old Canoptic Wraith's ability, but this is better. The reason being is you can apply this to three completely separate units, Lich Guard, Immortals, and Warriors. You can then further apply another buff from another character with two out of three of those said units, Immortals and Warriors. Now we've all got our opinions already from the pre-release sort of release of this codex, how Warriors and Immortals are going to go. I think Warriors are severely nerfed, severely nerfed this codex. Their resiliency is nowhere near as good as it was. That was their main gimmick, being able to survive. You had the Undying Legions protocol, reanimation protocols. You had the reanimator with the Chromatic Reanimator ability, the Resurrection Orb. There were just loads of stuff that was keeping that 20 man blob up and running. Now, not so much, not so much. Their numbers as Legion is another one that's been nerfed, the Warrior's ability. 
Immortals, however, they are big now. They are big. There's a lot of synergy there. There's a lot of things you can do with them. And we'll talk about some of that in a moment. But the main reason for taking this Overlord with this shroud is purely because of the shroud. But let's talk about it for a sec. Let's, what can we actually do? Let's go with Necron Immortals because that's the easy and obvious sort of unit to use when taking this character. So you get your Overlord with the shroud. You get your Immortals. With your Immortals, you go Tesla. You take your Tesla Carbines because they've got the Assault keyword, which means you could advance and still be eligible to fire your weapons. If you're eligible to fire your weapons, you either A, fire your weapons, or B, you can do one of the actions such as cleanse, deploy teleport over, and so on. So that's part one. Now part two is when you bring a Cryptek on board with the same unit. There's a couple of options here. Option number one, if you want to go more aggressive, you take a Plasmancer. The Plasmancer will allow you to have critical hit rolls of a 5+, plus. so when you've got sustained hits too on those Tesla Carbines, and criticals on a 5+, plus explode into 3 hits rather than 1, that's great. And you can still do that while advancing and translocating through enemy models. So take that back a step, let's, let's rewind a moment. How far are we actually going here? They're moving 5 inches anyway. You've got 6 inches from the advanced move, that's 11 inches and still firing. 11 inches and going through models. You could literally go up the battlefield 11 inches through screens, doesn't matter what the screen is, if you can get through it, you go through it. You can then shoot, which is great. Again, if you've got that plasma, so you're spraying critical hits on a 5+. plus. Don't forget, Immortals re-roll re -rolls of a 1. They can potentially re-roll all the win rolls if there's an enemy unit on an objective that you're firing at. You've got things like the Abasance Phalanx, which would mean you get maybe a plus one to the wound roll. If you've got the Awakened Dynasty, it's a plus one to the hit roll with Command Protocols. And of course the Canoptic Court, which is if you've got that Plasmanta or any of the Cryptex in that unit, you can unlock all their, all their stuff. The Power Matrix could maybe be unlocked because you've moved so far. Because each one is OT2 with those Immortals, right? So you can quite easily take over an objective. Maybe it's Storm Hostile objective as an objective. Maybe it's Secure No Man's Land, Extend Battle Lines. You can get onto those objectives, take over it with your OC2 per model. With your Overlord, of course, in that in that unit. Spray your shots with the Plasmans that all do deploy Teleport Homers or whatever it is. But yeah, you're making your way up the board. But that is just one example. The other example is even better in my opinion. In terms of speed and scoring anyway, not in terms of killing, that's the Plasmancer job. In terms of speed and scoring, you go to a Chronomancer. Now the Chronomancer has two cool abilities that which will massively benefit the entire unit, including the Overlord. First of all, the minus one to hit, I can't remember what you call it off the top of my head, minus one to hit the unit. Second of all, and most importantly, it's after you've shot your weapons with the unit, you can make a move, a normal move, of 5 inches. So let's rewind that again. Start again. You've got your Overlord with, with the Translocation Shroud. You've got the Chronomancer with that ability that we'll go over in a moment. So you're moving 5 inches to start with. You then move another 6 inches for the advanced roll, that's 11. You're then firing all your weapons. Tesla, da 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 da. Doesn't even have to, oh no, it does have to be Tesla actually. Assault. You've got your Tesla. You've shot, maybe you've killed some models. You then move a further five inches. So now you're talking 16 inches of movement through models, through terrain, OC2 per model, and you can get almost anywhere. You're, you're going fast with infantry as well, battle line infantry unit. So when you're doing that, again, you look at your secondary objective cards, what have I got to do? Let the Immortals do it. You don't need a Deep Strike unit because they can move literally 16 inches with the Chronomancer. And you don't even have to use it for objectives. You can maybe do your move, do your advance, take your shots, and then use that extra 5 inch movement from the Chronomancer to dip into cover behind obscuring terrain, out of line of sight. So therefore they're not going to be able to be targeted as easily in your opponent's turn. 
So there's a lot to that. There's a lot to that. Plasmancer and Chronomancer alongside this Overlord with the Translocation Shroud, I think is a big deal. It's a big deal. It doesn't even have to be Immortals, don't forget. It could be your Warriors. I know I kind of dismissed Warriors earlier in this video. But with a 20-man brick, maybe you've got Illuminazares behind. He's popped out of a Ghost Arc. So the Ghost Arc can do the Repair Barge. The Repair Barge isn't going to be as strong because Reanimation Protocols won't be as strong. But it's still going to help the Resiliency slightly. You don't necessarily need the Ghost Arc. You don't necessarily need Illuminazares for that minus one to the AP of enemy weapons. You don't necessarily need it, but 20 warriors with OC2 works the same way as the Immortals. You're rushing forward. They don't have Toughness 5, they've got Toughness 4. They don't have a 3 plus armor, they've got a 4 plus armor. But the sheer number of them. Now the only drawback to warriors is they do not have the Assault keyword. They do not carry the Assault keyword, so therefore you could use the Awakened Dynasty for the Procol Sunstorm to add Assault to the unit, potentially. But I think the Immortals are the better option. With all those re-rolls to wound. And you can even further boost it as well. Don't forget, my will be done is, a, is a, an ability with the Overlord. Where you can use a battle tactic stratagem on the unit. In the Canoptic Court, there is a stratagem. Where you can turn on devastating wounds for the unit in the shooting phase or fight phase. As long as they've got the cryptic or canoptic keyword in the unit. If the Plasmancer's there or the Chronomancer's there. The cryptic keyword is shared between the unit, so therefore it's a cryptic unit. Therefore, normally it would be 2 CP, but you're getting it for, for, for 0, for 3. Devastating Wounds. You could then have 2 units of these, so therefore you could apply it twice. With 2 different overlords, with the 2 different translocation shrouds. Because even if you've already used it that phase, you can use it again. So you turn on Devastating Wounds alongside all that synergy we just mentioned with all the re-rolls. There's a, just a lot to do. There's a lot to do. Bearing in mind you could be in your Power Matrix again with the Cryptic Court to be able to re-roll hit rolls of 1. Maybe re-rolling all the hit rolls if you're actually within the Power Matrix. So you're re-rolling almost everything. To Wound you may be re-rolling almost everything. Sustain hits 2. Critical hits on a 5+. plus, Devastating Wounds. Doing all this movement. It's a nasty synergy. And it's all because of this Overlord with the Translocation Shroud. So that's Immortals, that's Warriors. What about the Lich Guard? I mean, we could still use all of these abilities with the Shroud to get the Lich Guard up the battlefield. Now, of course, you're not going to be putting the Chronomancer in there. You're not going to be putting the Plasmancer in there. The Plasmancer works with ranged attacks anyway. But the Chronomancer won't be allowed to go in that unit. So you're not going to get that additional 5 inches of movement. But doing a standard move and then doing the translocation move of 6 inches is still decent with a unit of Lich Guard with the Swords and Shields. Getting onto an objective, bunkering down, 4 plus invulnerable save. Yes, maybe Wraiths are now the better option in this codex. Much more resilient and can take a Technomancer. But you do have the option of putting the Overlord with them. And of course the Lich Guard have their ability for a minus 1 to wound with a Noble in the unit. Providing that the strength of the weapon that's targeting them is higher than their actual toughness of 5. Now other stratagems that you could comply with this actual overlord when you're going with any of these units that we spoke about you've got from the Corrupted Court you could use the Dimensional Sanctums give them infiltrators maybe that will already get them halfway up the battlefield. With the Abasance Phalanx Eternal Conquerors to get the rerolls hit rolls of all the hit rolls when they're on an objective you've got with that same detachment in fact for 1 CP Enslaved Artifice for 5 plus critical hit rolls which means you wouldn't actually need a Plasmancer so you take your Chronomancer, get all the movement but also gain the buffs that a Plasmancer would normally give you for the pl for the 5 plus criticals for Hive Crypt Legion you've got the Horizon Tyrant to reroll all the hit rolls again very similar abilities in fact and the Osteoclave Fulcrum to give the unit Deep Strike so if they're constantly hyperphasing in they can do it with Deep Strike rather than Strategic Reserves and from the Standard Awakened Dynasty the Eternal Revenant, Protocol of Eternal Revenant, which basically means if the Overlord does die, he can stand back up at the end of the phase now, and he'll be standing up with half of his wounds remaining, rather than in the phase where he can die again. There's also the Veil of Darkness, of course, and the Realm, the Nether Realm casket for stealth, which means you wouldn't actually need the Chronomancer in that case, because he already provides a minus one to hit. So if you go with the Plasmancer route, maybe that's the better option there. But there's a lot of options for your Overlord and all the units that he goes with.
So guys, I just wanted to share my thoughts on this Overlord model. I wanted to give a, a little bit of tactical analysis, if you like, pre-codex. I will be doing the full reviews once the codex does drop. I don't know when I'll be filtering them in, because of course we're doing the Christmas videos. But yeah, I thought I'd share that with you today. But yeah, I'll see you in that next video.